Back to the legendary and down to earth comic vault. I am Captain Logan. And, I'm Matt. and today we are taking a look at Superman for All Seasons by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. Uh, this is the second in our series of Superman Origins. Superman Origins. And uh, this one uh, was published all the way. Uh, at 1999. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first one we covered was 86, and we've jumped all the way to 1999. Oh, so I'm wrong. I, I always thought this is what he, this is what they did after uh, Long Halloween. This would have to be after uh, Dark Victory. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I look. I mean, the date I saw in there was 99. I think that's right. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, it's definitely before Smallville. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, which we'll talk about, because it's really interesting reading this and considering that Jeff Loeb is one of the main producers at the beginning of Smallville. Uh, and writers. So, right off the bat, let me just say that I have liked... Okay, nine, 98 was the singles, and then this came out in 99. Um, so, uh, right off the gate, let me say that uh, I have liked most of the things I've read by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. Them as a piece. Them as a piece. Yeah, yeah, exa yeah exactly. Yeah. And, um, of course, I don't think I've ever read anything with Tim Sale apart from Jeff Loeb. Uh, I know he draws Grendel, but I've never read that. Oh, does he draw some Grendel? Yeah. Oh, I know that. I've always meant to read Grendel. That's Matt Wagner's big thing. Um, that's on. That's mentioned on this on this page. Oh, okay. Um, and it's also weird because Jeff Loeb is credited for Buffy the Animated Series, which never came out. That's I mean, funny. That's pretty funny. Uh, but anyway, so... Uh, Jeff Loeb, of course, has a reputation for being uh, a once good writer who was, I think a lot of people would say even at the time he was kind of hit and miss, and then, and now he's gotten to, he just doesn't know how to do the job anymore. Well, and every, and every time he works with Tim Sale, it's like, oh, no, no, he's back, he's back. Because that's what happened with uh, Captain America White. Everyone was like, oh, Jeff Loeb, Jeff Loeb doesn't write again. Well, and we but just, you told me that was, that, that was a, they a started that, script. Yeah, they... He probably had already finished it. They start that a long time earlier. Mm -hmm. Like, right after Cap's death. Um, well, and... and um, he's not really writing much anymore. He's he's head of Marvel TV now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when but like, like when he is... You know, I, I guess I should say, last decade, he really developed... Yeah, after Hush. Like, he really developed And then that. Uh, his, his Our big... Our World at War was his, a thing, and then Batman versus... Or, uh, uh, Superman Batman, a lot of people didn't like. Well, but some people do like that, and a lot of people like Hush. Yeah, It's really true. when he goes back to Marvel. People hate his Wolverine. Yeah. People hate Ultimates 3 and Ultimates But then after that stuff, I feel like people then went back retroactively. Like, oh, wait... Hush isn't that good, and I've reviewed Hush, and it's a pretty book, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. People hated Red Hulk, and then kind of near the end, a lot of people did change their opinion on that book, and think mm -hmm. it's a little better than they gave it credit for. Um, I've never finished it, so I don't, I don't have a yeah, complete I opinion that yet. yet. Um, I've got all that. Okay. Um, I don't know if I have it here, but I have all of it. Um, I, I think the first thing we should really talk about is whether or not this is a Superman origin story. Yeah. Because... I've never read this book. I've, I've owned this for about two years, and I've never read it, and I didn't know whether it should be in this. I just saw enough people in the comments mentioning this alongside Birthright and Secret Origin and Man of Steel. I felt like we might as well do it. Yeah. Um, it is and it's not. Yeah. Uh, it's hard not to view it as, and I don't mean to steal your point, but you and I both said this. I shared it, and I, mm -hmm. and, and I would have thought of this independently, but let me just credit you a little bit. You did say this before I even read the book, because you read mm -hmm. it just before I got my hands on We have one copy of things. Um, I, uh, I felt like I was reading kind of between some lines from... Uh, John Byrne, but then it isn't exactly that either, and it, it feels like it kind of takes some of the stuff Byrne did and runs. I was surprised by just how much of this is influenced by Byrne, and how much of it isn't just him trying to turn Byrne stuff on its head and go, here's what he did, let's do the opposite, or let's, no, let's, it feels let's like, turn it on its head. It's it, not that. It feels like if you hadn't read John Byrne in like five, ten years, and you read this, you would think this fills in between the raindrops. Yeah. Um, it It's so close... And if you just had memories of what goes on this book, you would probably think this fits perfectly within the framework of Man of Steel. Having I mean, just read it, it doesn't line up exactly. No, it, it, it's a different thing. It, pay, it it paves over it if this were canonical. I don't know that it is. I don't know. It I, doesn't really matter. You know, yeah, it honestly does. Because so much of it is just uh, personal hometown Smallville life stuff. And that, mm. That's what I like about it. Oh, yeah. Um, I like, I'd love to know what John Byrne would think of this. And I bet he'd like it. 
I don't know. John Byrne hates everyone. Oh, does he really? Oh, okay. John Byrne is that. a really controversial figure in comics. Okay, he hates sorry, everyone. I didn't. I didn't know that. Um, and he thinks everyone does Just everything based on wrong that. except for him. Oh, weird. He's okay. the only one All who right. gets anything. All right. Uh, but, okay, so let's just say it's really reverential to that material. Oh, yeah. Um, I was surprised by by how similar some of the stuff with Lex was, especially that, like, the, the, green, sorry, the, the green suits come back. And, and, he's, have, and he's balding. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, it, it really feels like it's written to complement Man of Steel, it just doesn't fit exactly. Yeah. Um, continuity wise. I'm not, I'm not sure why that. I wonder if maybe made. Jeff Loeb didn't go back and reread Man of Steel and was just going off of memories when he wrote it. That, um, yeah, that would be weird, but. Because it's, it's, it's strange that it's not more of its own thing. Especially because soon after this, Jeff Loeb takes over Superman and completely reinvents Burns Krypton and says that everything that we've seen previously is. Implanted memories, but we should mention that Krypton doesn't play even a little bit of a factor here. In fact, uh, by the end of the book, I don't know that Superman even knows he's Kryptonian. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, and it, it still does that thing up. you like, where he doesn't know he's alien. And yeah, he knows there's a ship. They don't even talk about what the ship is this time. Well, and Lex like, su says something to him at some and point. He's when like he's like alien. And yeah, maybe you're you're alien, and um, it's as if he's never thought of that before. Mm -hmm. uh, and they Lope kind of paves over the rocket ship thing, where like where, where like the ship's there, and he's and. And, and Paw Kent shows it to I don't him. think we even see it. But we don't see that happen. We just know that it did. Yeah, we just kind of we skip over that. Mm -hmm. um, There's a lot of stuff we skip over. And we should also mention that in asking the question, is it an origin, which I can almost see an argument about. Um, mm -hmm. I, I mean, like, it's it's an origin in the sense that it's... It's kind of a first Superman adventure. Yeah, it's it's the early days. We see, It's like everything in between all the stuff you usually see. Like, like he shows up... Uh, to a kid in Metropolis uh, to help him off a roof or something, and uh, the kid's like cool costume. He says, "Thanks, my mom made it for me." Or my, my mom made it for me. Or we don't see that happen. We don't actually see that happen. Yeah. Yeah. It's very strange. We confirm a lot that we don't actually see, uh, but I think that helps to make it more of a cohesive piece. Like he's not chalking off, he's not checking off the the, the boxes mm -hmm. with all the Superman origin stuff. Mm -hmm. He's telling a story about uh, how difficult it is for Superman to. Uh, accepts his limitations. That's what the book is all about. Mm -hmm. And that's a thing that Byrne drifts in and out of, but the whole book isn't about that. Mm -hmm. This was him going, okay, let's do all that stuff that you kind of th thought thematically Byrne would have done with his book. That, that's mm -hmm. how I read it. Um, uh, so so the it, it's four issues. Mm -hmm. They're four chunky, oversized issues. Um, and each one is told from a different character's perspective, or at least is narrated by a different character. Uh, we see things that they don't see, but with their narration over it. Um, and the first issue is narrated, uh, and it's for all seasons. We cut each issue is one season, mm -hmm. um, and they they are obsessed with telling a story in a year, and um, and because and it's like how long Halloween. But you know what this doesn't do that that Loeb is notorious for clean bow at the end of a whole year or cramming all the villains in. Yeah, there's not a one besides Lex Luthor. It's not a villainy book. Well, and he creates a villain, kind of. Toxin, kind of, a little is bit. Is she a villain? Is she I, a villain yet? Could we even that's really not That's that? not a good guy name. No, certainly not, but it's not like she goes off on her own and has a plan or anything. Well, but like, there's not even other super she's characters. A tra no, you're right, but I'm just saying she's a tragic character. She's mm -hmm. She thinks she's doing good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lex Luthor kind of creates her. His whole thing is find ways to replace Superman so he's not yeah. needed and then convince him to leave. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't call her a villain. For, okay. For okay. So, so yeah, sure. George, just Lex Luthor. It's just Lex Luthor. Which is she has a costume and stuff. Sure, you could see that maybe mm -hmm. maybe if we were to continue this or something, you know, into something, she would become a a bad light guy victory. character. If we do a single light victory. <laughs> um, but uh, so, let me ask you this real quick: Is this intended to kind of be be their Superman color book? You know, you know, you got no. yellow and you got no, Captain no, no, White, no. and because like, the color books are all based around the death. And that's why I asked you that question because this really isn't. Mm -hmm. And that, and while I was reading it, I kind of expected one of the Kents to die real early because I thought maybe that's what it was going to be. Mm -hmm. It was going to be based around a, a death. And I'm just a little bit surprised that they did this instead of a color. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure why they did that. Well, because the color books are only Marvel. Oh, are that's they? their Marvel. Oh, book. are they? Yeah, I guess they are. I guess that's true. Yep. yep. Okay. And, and somehow, or rather, I never quite put that together. And those are all specifically built around the death of someone. I don't know who Spider... I, I assume Captain America White is built around, uh, is built around Cap's Buck, death. Uh, or Bucky's death. Bucky. Oh, okay. 
But I've only read the first couple issues um, of that. Because Daredevil is it's him dealing with Karen Payne's uh, Karen Page's yeah. death. Uh, so you mean it's always major deaths of in, in comics that happen? Yeah, Spider Man's dealing with uh, Gwen Stacy's death, and then Hulk is dealing with uh, the recent death of uh, uh, Betty. So if you could do that in DC and you had the colors, you could do it around one of the Kents, I guess. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Because uh, Jonathan Kent's death is a major plot point in some Superman, Superman things. They haven't done Red yet. The problem with that is that immediately people who know their Superman comics from the 90s are going to think... Right, Superman, Superman Red, Red. Superman, yes. That's the only problem with that. Well, there were, well, there's only so many colors. No, you're right. You can do Batman Black um, about uh, Jason's death. Yeah, yeah, you can't do Batman Gray now, which is what you'd want that to be called. I yeah, because it's Hulk Gray. Cool, because you have Hulk Gray. Anyway, somehow rather it never occurred to me that the colors are all Marvel. I'm an idiot. Let's move <laughs> on. So the, the first issue, which is Spring is uh, narrated entirely by Pa Kent. Mm -hmm. And uh, reading this, I also, I thought he was going to die. I thought he was going to die. Um, and they they seem to deliberately make them really decrepit looking. I really like how his 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 Pa looks. Um, I, I, like I don't know how what they he... sound for the most part, too. I think uh, he's got a really good voice for them. Mm -hmm. Occasionally, Jeff Loeb gets into word choice issues. And mm -hmm. I have that with everything I've ever read from him, where I was like, "This needed another pass." Like you just it, that wasn't that was awkward phrasing. I don't I don't have good examples right now, yeah. unless, I'm, unless I picked it up and, and flipped through it. But um, but I had that a little bit here and there, especially with with Jonathan Kent. But for the most part, yeah, I also um, really like their voices. So the first issue story is basically we pick up with Clark near the end of high school, maybe even right after high school. I can't remember if he's actually in high school. It was or not. right after, yeah. Um, it's basically the story of him deciding to leave and become Superman. Mm -hmm. um, that's that. That's the thing about this real light plot. Um, yeah. It's. Uh, I, I mean, like a slightly more detailed is he's not really sure what's, what he wants to do with his life. A tornado hits. He saves people, but he doesn't really. He saves his family, but he's like, I could have stopped that tornado. Period, and the town wouldn't because the town's uh, really really messed up. Yeah, and he feels bad because uh, people got hurt and he didn't stop it. Yeah, and and he goes to a pastor. Yeah, and he which says, I, which is a great it's scene. a great scene, and he says uh, what it, and clearly uh, when when uh, uh, what's his face when Goyer was working on Man of Steel, he went back and looked at this. Oh because, sure. Um, the, now, now the because I feel like the pastor scene probably came from this, mm -hmm. uh, even though it's about different things. Mm -hmm. uh, but he goes to a pastor and he says, uh, he, he says, "What if somebody could stop uh, uh, all of this single handedly?" What, what would you? And the pastor has yeah. no answer for him. Yeah. Uh, well, because he he's like, but there is no one that can. Yeah. Exactly. Um, uh, we do a thing that I think is really interesting. Uh, that's just a, that's just a gorgeous. George's panel. Mm -hmm. um, we do this thing uh, that I think is interesting where uh, Jeff Loeb establishes that Martha is a believer, but Jonathan doesn't really care. He's not an atheist, but he doesn't... It's really, it's really more Martha's thing. Yeah. Um, I think that's a really interesting character trait. Um, and a really realistic character trait, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you. I and, feel like most of the time... Like, it's typical, but it's typical in... In a, in a in not like an eye really cliche way. It's mm -hmm. like... It's, like a, it, it's typical in the sense that in a, in a way where you can it resonates because you have a lot of families like that, especially in Bible Belt. Where well, it felt more believable to me than the way I think we usually portray it as one of two things. Either one of them... Sometimes we sweep it under the rug and we don't even talk about it. Well, yeah. But but, but when when you have specifically parents that are believers, they're either both really devout or one of them is and the other one is aggressively anti. Yeah, that's right. Um, and this is just, it just kind of touches on it, and I thought that was nice. I thought it was a little weird that in Smallville, church never comes up. Yeah. I just... Oh, was, oh in the show. In the show. Oh, yeah, Yeah, the church right. never comes up. You're right. And that's a little odd. You'd, you'd think it would. Yeah. Like, religion never hardly comes up in a small town like that, everybody yeah. goes to church. Well, I mean, it's not as small as they're pretending like it is. Yeah. I'm always harping on that. But, um... You, you, you have the whole, you know, small town, traditional, conservative values, where they come from... Usually, uh, in in a, in a small town like that, anyway, it's going to be Christianity. I'm not saying that's the only place that those values can come from, mm -hmm. or, or that they're not moral if they're not Christian. I'm obviously not saying that, um, but uh, I feel like this day and age, you have to put that ca that caveat in there. Uh, but in a, but even but even as late as 2001, you think it would come up yeah. at the very least. And um, I think it hardly ever. I don't think it ever does. If it does, it's not often. Anyway, yeah. Um, 
So this book does the thing. I can't remember if Man of Steel does it. We probably discussed it. Well, especially because Seventh Heaven is big at that point. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's why they don't do it. Maybe so. Because I think it's the same network. Maybe they felt like they already had that. Yeah. Um, okay. So Man of Steel does the... He kind of gets his powers as he grows. Um, Man of Steel does the... Uh, <laughs> we're like, he kind of starts with powers and they get stronger as he gets older. Yeah. This does the more smallville thing where it seems like it's, it's not really fully coming out until he's into adolescence and then into a teenager because he goes to get his haircut and it breaks the the scissors and that doesn't seem like the thing that's that happens like he's surprised by it and immediately leaves yeah he's not expecting that to happen um but he's he's nervous and concerned that there will be a situation it's almost as if they all come to him at once yeah yeah like like, like he had like he woke up one day and had all of his powers yeah I mean, I, I got the sense that it's somewhat gradual because they seem to already know there's something different about him. Mm -hmm. But then but then it kind of seems like they come on strong real quick. Like they were still on the rocket. Like they were somewhat latent. Um, um, what did you think of that scene? Just just that they do the whole, like, like, like the, the hair breaks the scissors thing. Because instantly he's, al he's already a stronger Superman than the John Byrne version. Yeah. Um, I liked it. Um, I like that the guy immediately goes, like... Oh, these scissors aren't worth anything. Everything is, you know, everything's made so cheap now. Yeah. He, he doesn't, there's no, like, suspicion. It's just immediately like, oh, these are terrible scissors. And I was surprised that I, that I, that I bought that. I mm -hmm. was okay with that because um, that does seem like a realistic response for that character. Yeah, well, and, and he builds a lot of... Uh, if it kept happening... Like, like that's that's a big Smallville problem. Is you have this suspicious character like Clark Kent who keeps mm. doing stuff, and people keep buying the stupid excuses or making up dumb things themselves, deciding that's what actually happened. Uh, but like the one time older guy set in his ways mm. hardly ever leaves that barber and shop. And probably is constantly complaining about how everything how everything's going to crap and how how nothing's built well anymore. Yeah, they don't make it like they used to. Yeah, it's just another example of how everything's made cheap now. Exactly. Um. And, and we should mention, uh, because we only bookend with Smallville, really. Yeah. Um, but it's hard not to feel like you're there all the way through it. Well, I, I was going to say, we get a lot from, from the Smallville, like, supporting cast. Yes. And not just, not just, like, the actual, like, characters, but the characters that were invented for this book. Just town, Smallville folk. Can, okay, real quick. Can I go ahead and do my Smallville rant now? Because that's the thing I do not understand. Were we going to talk about Lana? No. Uh, well, we can. Oh, okay. Certainly. I thought that was your Smallville rant. My Smallville rant is, how does this guy help make that show? I don't I know. I don't understand that. Especially uh, with Lana. He gets the old, small, mis Midwestern town so right. And, mm -hmm. and that's 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 like my stomping grounds. That's where I'm from. I'm from both the South and the Midwest, and in small to to mid level towns. Mm -hmm. He gets he gets it totally right. Uh, and and uh, there's a lot of stuff about how this town is kind of like it's not a ghost town yet. It's it's but it's kind of it's kind of stagnated, and people wish they could leave. And it and they feels feel small out there. It feels small, and, um, and everyone knows each other. It's Mayberry. And uh, you've got, um, and like I was like like you got you got the barber. Uh, I was reminded a little bit of of the Mayberry barber. Like it's kind it's kind of Mayberry, except that it never got into the late twentieth century, and uh, all the kids want to leave. And the the saddest thing is the kid who wants a million dollars. And oh, that's um, uh, that's Pete Ross. Isn't yeah, that's it? Pete Ross. Yeah, he wants a million dollars, and he never leaves the town. And uh, when he grows up, uh, he decides. You and know, doesn't like, he want to travel? Yeah, yeah, and by the end of the book, uh, he decides that it's not in the cards and it's not realistic, and he gives up on his dreams. Okay, and then he gets Lana at the end. Um, Here's my problem with Pete Ross. Yeah. Okay, so this is a thing with Jeff Loeb. Jeff Loeb steals, and Jeff Loeb steals from. He, 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 there's that there's, there's that old adage, adage. 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 There's that old adage about how if you're gonna steal, you steal from the best. Trying not to make fun of you. Okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry. I just said it Sorry. wrong, and I was Sorry. like, maybe yeah. I didn't say it wrong. I'm, I'm going to start saying that, though. Uh, adage. This is all adage. It, 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 it's kind of blanket. Wow. Um, <laughs> Why are you pretentious? It's adage. <laughs> adage. It's adage. That's Darling. Eric. Um, anyway. Okay. So, Jeff Loeb is kind of known 
for, for doing that to the extreme. When he steals, he steals from the best. There are scenes in Long Halloween that are straight out of The Godfather. There are scenes in Long Halloween that are straight out of Silence of the Lambs. What did he rip from this? Pete Ross uh -huh. is the main character. I know you haven't seen this film, so you wouldn't have picked up on it. He is the main character of uh, It's a Wonderful Life. And I still haven't watched it. I'm doing a, a Rewind United on that for Christmas this year, though, so I, I will, I will okay. finally see So that. the main character of that... Another movie I somehow or rather did not grow up with. ...wants to go out and travel the world. And when he goes to the store that he works at, there's a little thing that he, like, does like a thing with... I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's, it's a little thing that he pushes down on, and he goes, I want a million dollars. He pushes down on it, and a, and a flame comes up, and he goes, hot dog. Um, that's exactly what he does. And the compromise that he makes in that film is staying at home and running the family business instead of going out and going Which is around what he world. does here. Which is exactly what he does here. Because he takes over the soda jerk place or whatever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's the exact same character. Wow. See, I, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt and call that an homage before a steal because it's sure. such a small part sure, of it. it's a minor character. Like, like I kind of... If it was, like, one of those... Th if, like, the million dollars thing was there, but he went somewhere else with it, mm -hmm. be like, okay, he's taking that character and he's modernizing it or, he, or he's saying something with it or, mm -hmm. he's, or it's, just a, it's just a cool homage. Um, but I can see why you would think that's a problem, uh, certainly. It just bugs me. It's it's a thing that he does a lot. Um, I like the guys that never stop playing poker. Yep. Yep. But now you got me wondering where he pulled that from. Like, And I've seen that in other things. That doesn't feel like a specific thing, but I mean, we've we've seen those characters in many things. No, sure. Um, but I, but I kind of like how they bad. comment on it. Like, like I, I like that line where it's like, uh, where, where, where somebody uh, asks Clark to come over and play poker, and then somebody else is like, Pete or someone, yeah, it's is like, see in 30 years. Yeah. I thought that was pretty great. And I like when Clark comes back at the end of the book, he says, uh, are you still playing that game? Yeah. As if it's the same game. And as if they've never gotten up. <laughs> Um, uh, what else? Did Apparently I... that place doesn't close. Well, and we should talk about Lana. Yeah, now, absolutely. Uh, something that I think he does here, because I love his Lana. Um, I do too. And, I mean, again, how is he, how is he working on small... And we know he wrote scripts. Like, how... She is, she is the polar opposite. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a thing that we talked about in Man of Steel, mm -hmm. where we felt like it was... And this is the main thing he builds on, right? From, oh, from yeah. That? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, we talked about how it was kind of a leap, uh, we felt like it was kind of a leap that Lana was like, I thought he was going to marry me. He starts with, Lana, will you? Lifts her into the air. And then she's like, what's going on? And then he says, will you trust me? Yeah, that's cool. That works real well. Well, and the reason we thought it was a leap in Man of Steel, uh, we, and, and I feel like I was harder on this than you were, but the reason mm. we thought it was a leap there was because they didn't seem to even really be dating, and, and like, like it, it wasn't really a relationship. I'm, I'm once again, not 100% sure they are here either. Mm -hmm. um, unless I'm just not remembering it. Correctly. I don't think they're dating, dating. I mean, again, she clearly like, has at, feelings for him. And point. again, it's that kind of small town mentality where I'm like, well... It might be they're kind of courting. Like, I think going right into marriage would be less weird in that kind of environment. That's a good point, sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so i got to ask the question. Okay, what is the question? Because I, because this might just be a me thing. Mm -hmm. When I got to the end of this book... with The with, first book or the whole story? The whole story. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and go there now. Okay. Because we're talking about her and because this is, this is very much a, a, a cohesive story, at least, especially as far as that's concerned. Mm-hmm. When we get to, and it bookends just like uh, I'm gonna steal did going uh, back and seeing Lana. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and and like like uh, I was half expecting Batman to show up in this book. <laughs> so, I, so it's, like, it's all the stuff in between. I kind of thought. Or like that, I remember that magpie thing. I kind of thought that the fourth issue was gonna be narrated by Batman. <laughs> so, by the end of the book, uh, he he goes back to Metropolis and leaves her there. And the thing I do not understand is why he's not enamored with her. I agree. I do not understand that. I agree. And it, it really comes off like, because that's not, that's not a soulmate. That's not I the way it's supposed to work out. In, in, the, in, the, in the Superman comics, it's Lois Lane. And in this, even more so than in John Byrne, because at least, and this is where John, this, this is the big op John Byrne has over this, as far as that, as far as the Smallville stuff is concerned, mm -hmm. is that by the end of that, 
he is already infatuated with Lois Lane, and you can understand why. And, and it's been like five years. And he hasn't thought about Lana in a long time, mm. especially in that way. And I don't know if he ever has with her at all. Um, they're, they're trying to play it like she thinks of him romantically. He thinks of her more like a brother-sister thing. I'm not seeing it here, and there is nothing yet at all in this about his and Lois ever even remotely being an item. Yeah. We don't even begin to broach it. Yeah, it's it's very strange. Um I don't get that. If if it were if it were me, I would be head over heels for her. But I think that's because Jeff Loeb does such a good job of writing her, he makes me want to marry her. Mm -hmm. Which is dangerous because you're married. That's true, it's a problem, yeah. Um it puts me in, in the character's head enough I want to marry her. <laughs> Um, if I were Clark Kent, <laughs> we know what this <laughs> means. Um, uh, caveat. Um, <laughs> I was gonna do that. <laughs> it's a, um, I'd like to give you a brief adage. <laughs> well, well, you, you you know when uh when spies come in, they have to debroth their their uh their their uh, debroth. Debra. Boy, that does, that doesn't even make sense. There, there's an I in that word. I, Debrai. <laughs> Any, um, anyway, so uh, so you agree with me on that? No, I I, I agree. Um, it doesn't. I, I think this is this is an issue that. that I'm not saying it kills it. I just I think it's an issue that um, sometimes superheroes run into where you they're supposed to you're be something to a status quo. When you go back and tell stories, sometimes, and you want to flesh them out and make them likable characters and then it does seem weird why doesn't he at least date her like maybe it doesn't work out but why doesn't he at least date her yeah. he's not with Lois it's, and it's she strange. already knows the secret and she can handle it and mm -hmm. like she's the perfect person mm -hmm. to be with yep. and I don't mean if you haven't especially if you haven't read this I don't mean to say that he should be jumping at the chance because she likes it just because she likes him I mean mm -hmm. she's just so likable mm -hmm. But anyway, so at at the end of it, um, the, uh, the 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 first at, issue. At the end, I'm, sorry, at, I'm at, skipping at the around because I'm looking at this so at, much as a whole. At, at the end of the first issue, uh, we go to Metropolis a little bit. We get introduced to, and and again, we skip everything. Yes, we skip the creation of the costume. We skip uh, him. Whatever the first save is. Uh, no, no, no. I think the, we see that. I think the first save is the kid. The, that's okay, but, the first time we see him. But we don't see the first public scene. We don't see whatever mm. the, the the airplane or whatever would be. Yeah, we don't uh, we, we don't see him get the job at the daily plant. Mm -hmm. So I don't, we don't have to argue about that this time. In this book, we don't know if we don't even know how he gets the job. If he scooped, time. if he scooped Lois, Lois doesn't seem to be treating him the way she treats him in Man of Steel, where she's kind of ribbing him over. And get, she get does get annoyed at him because he does tend to scoop her. On mm -hmm. Superman things, but that's that doesn't seem to be necessarily how he got the job. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also and we also don't know if he was doing uh, journalism stuff in Smallville. Yeah, yeah. We also set up um, Lex right at the very end with this thing that's kind of a running thing, and then just kind of gets dropped. Lex wears a hat, and Superman keeps anytime he goes by. It flies off. I think that's really. Funny. It's a real nice little little character thing. I wish we did it more often. Yeah. Well. I wish we you're did, right, we do drop it. I wish we did the balding Lex, where he's self-conscious and so he wears a hat. Yeah, well, I really like that. Maybe Jeff Loeb thinks that I, because I, I didn't even think of that. Maybe he thinks that it's that, that it's not too subtle and that you would pick up on. Oh, he wears a hat because he's balding. I did not think of that. Oh, is, oh, he's just wearing a hat. Oh, yeah, no, no, I assume that's what it is because every time it, every time he flies by. His hat goes off, and I assume that is a, an embarrassment. I think you're right. It is too subtle to me. I, oh, okay. Like, that's a thing that if you played it in, it would be much easier to play on film. Sure. Because, like, like in a panel, I don't see him, like, all that worried about his hair and stuff. Like, it's just... Sure. And it looks kind of 40s period. Yeah. So people are wearing hats. Like, I'm not... Okay. It just seems like Superman being irritating to him. Like, here's a guy I don't like, I'm going to knock his hat off. Like, it's a, that's, that's a very, like, Peter Parker thing to do. Sure, but I just I, I, don't I know. think you're right. Okay, but I, I but I would be surprised if I were in too much of a minority of people who read that and did not pick up on that. Okay, you put a Hitler stash in that Perry White. That's uh, that's J.J. James, right? It, immediately. Yep. Um, it is, and he talks like him, and he's got the same facial expressions. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, there's a boy. Yeah. By the way, can I say something about that panel? His logic makes no sense. It's so funny. He's like. Uh, this people is what our readers want, and the more we give them what they want, or and the and the more we give them, the more they want. 
It's not exactly how that works. You know, if you oversaturate a thing, you might not sell papers as well. well that's probably why the Daily Planet's dying nowadays. <laughs> um, it's good. It's good. Well, after newspapers, they oversaturate them. I, I'm kidding. I get. I like. I get what he's getting at. But. And then we uh, we have the final uh, uh, pages. Uh, a kid running around on a skyscraper. Chasing his cat? I is that, a, is that. that an issue in, in, in cities that kids run around on skyscrapers chasing... Not if they've got a Superman. They don't have to worry cat. about it. I, uh, yeah, he's chasing his cat. Um, I, I assumed... Or is that a girl? I'm not even sure. Um, I assumed... No, is it a boy? It's your I, hair and I assumed cat. that... I just couldn't remember. I, I, I assumed that that was Loeb trying to do cat in a tree without doing cat in a tree. Sure. Um, and it, it, it immediately is less plausible and strange. I just don't know how that kid even got up there. But and anyway. Superman saves him, and once mm -hmm. again, we talked about in, in Man of Steel, uh, a lot of times, post-movie, our first reveal of Superman is him lifting something. This is, once again, not that. Yeah. Um, I like this reveal, and I love, we didn't mention, the first page where we just get glimpses of Superman as we like zoom in on the S. I really, I really like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I got real worried when I read that first page. I was like, oh no, this isn't an origin story at all. We were wrong. <laughs> um, but, uh, and, and, then, and then we, we get a little bit of Lex. Um, it's going to be a long, hot summer, which is what they should have called the Super Band, The Long Hot Summer. That's great. Um, so it's maybe not fair to compare them, but I like this Lex more than Burns. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Um... When we get to the Lex issue, I, I find agree. him less. Be I, I find him more believable because he's not so cartoony and flamboyant about telling everybody what he's doing and all of that. That I just felt like, he, like I get that it's '86 and 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 it's it's earlier and he's he's playing with silly over the top comic book stuff. But again, with Byrne, even in the context of that, I didn't quite buy it. Mm -hmm. And um, I just I like that his Lex doesn't do that. He's a little bit more understated. Um. Oh, there it is again. I didn't realize that's a, that's a repeat. I remember really liking that panel. I didn't. I didn't remember that's a repeat of the. Okay, so that's that's uh that's the, the close up on Clark with the glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's a repeat of the of the panel with with Pa Kent. Mm -hmm. The close up on him. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't remember. But what that. I was gonna say about Lex is he is he he's a he's better. I I feel like Globe is doing a little bit of a better job with the mass manipulation thing. We'll talk about when we get to lag. Okay, sure, sure. Um, you, you don't I, think so. I have things to say about Lex. Okay. Sure. Um, okay. Or about that issue in particular. I think that's the weakest issue. Um, well, and you've had a little bit more time to think about it than me. I just read this, so... I thought that I was reading that. Um, okay. All right. Um, so the second issue is narrated by Lois Lane. Mm -hmm. I'm really unclear whether it's what it is. I think it's an article, but I'm not sure. Because when we get it's, to the... It's in hand, handwriting script. No, it's not. So that's a thing. Is it not? Oh, no. I'm thinking about Lana later. Yeah, Lana's later has got to be like a, like a letter because it's in handwriting school. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. but 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 sorry, we open and close with with Perry has three rules about being a journalist: uh, believe none of what you hear, half of what you see, and everything you write, um, and sign your name to it. And we end with as long as I believe everything I write, I'll sign my name to it by Lois Lane. So it's got to be an article, I assume. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't make sense. Why? I'm assuming you're, there's a but here. What's this article about? Like, like I feel like, like, yeah, it works for this story. But if I read this article in a newspaper, I'd be like, and the point of this article was how you personally feel about Superman. Well, it could. I be, guess it's editorial. It could be an editorial, sure. But Lois doesn't do editorials. I mean, she doesn't say that in this book, but, but that's she, that's a character trait. She uh, doesn't usually do that, right? Yeah, she's she's about the journalism. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's even and she's line, an investigative journalist. I think so. there's even a line in uh, Superman the movie where he, where uh, she says something, and he's like, "Well, editorials are, are on page really seven. Uh, knows, yeah, yeah. News news is news on page one. Which one do you want to be on? Um, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, because she's not reporting the news there, really. No, she's just telling her opinion about Superman. Um, and she's telling you, and, and what news is there is stuff that mostly anyone reading would know already. Like, 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 isn't she? I'm not looking at the book right now, but, 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 but isn't isn't she in this in this issue talking about like how you know she named him and all that, or is that or is, is that even earlier? Than uh, I think she does mention it there that that, that she names him. Uh, yeah, because because she says that that 
that Jimmy wanted to name him Mighty Man. I liked that a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and the Metropolis and Marvel. And the Metropolis Marvel was a, was another newspaper tried to call him. And it sounded like a pro wrestler. Yeah. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, no, you're right. She's not really reporting news here. Um, and it's kind of... Uh, it's really introspective and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and is kind of um, some of this is even like attempted psychoanalysis and stuff. You know, like why? Because because that's another big question. In this is why would someone with powers, of course, help people instead of uh, in, in, instead of do the altruistic thing? Mm. And I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Why would why why would they do? Excuse me. Why would they do the altruistic thing thing instead of uh, using it to help themselves? Mm. And of course, that's the that's traditionally and in this the thing that Lex Luthor can't handle, and why he's got to he's got to quell Superman. I like that Lois doesn't get that either. I think that's really that's really cool and interesting, and maybe a thing that she would come to uh, to appreciate once she was actually dating Clark Kent. Um, so this issue, plot wise, is mostly Superman going around saving people, saving people, uh, and Lois's opinion on that. And then there's a little bit of Lex stuff at the end where uh, Lex sends his robots, which again is a burn thing. That the 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 suit is not a, a Lex Luthor thing; it's a Lex Corp thing, and they're kind of he's trying to sell them as like new police or something um, to replace Superman. So he doesn't need Superman because they have these armored Avengers kind of a thing. And uh, there's a burning building, and Superman shows up, and they're like, "Get out of here! We've already saved everyone. You don't need to be here." And he's like, "There's a woman in there that needs saving. Like you you miss someone, and that's unacceptable." Um, and then at the end, Lex goes to this to this woman. I I missed whether it is the woman he saves in the burning building or if it's a. It is okay. It is okay. So she's so he's like, I hear you like Superman, and she's like, Oh yeah, and she has like a a Superman shrine in her in her apartment. Yeah. Um. To be fair, there there is more of of Lois actually talking about real things happening that we're letting on. Mm -hmm. It just seems a little bit too all over the place for it to be a, a cohesive article. You're yeah. right about that. Because um, it's mostly a piece on Lex and his trying to replace Superman, I think. Um, and she's talking about like like her and Jimmy going to a place where Lex is and stuff. Mm -hmm. So like, there are specific concrete things that are happening. Um, my favorite thing in this is the Lex drones. I love that they have the L on them. Yeah, that's great. And, and then later there's a Lex copter with the big L on it. Just, I know you picked up on that. Oh, yeah, because I always... <laughs> if I notice something, I'll sound a book. It's helicopters. We, villain branded vi helicopters. Villain branded helicopters, yeah. Uh, where they're real flamboyant about it, and you, you see their name or a logo or something. Um, but it's it's always more fun when it looks like it's handwritten. Uh, but, but yeah, th this this idea that... Uh, that Lex's drones, and I say drones, they're people, but they're in these suits, um, that that he, like, like hires these people to do Superman's job for them, and they're a lot less effective because they're doing it for the money, mm -hmm. and that they're not there for the right reasons, mm -hmm. and that they're not giving of themselves, and that that's, of course, the difference between uh, the example and the regular man, and, uh, and, and I like that they continue throughout this, that, like, he keeps trying to use them for that. Yeah. Uh, and they tend to mess stuff up. And, uh, they're, they're, they're uh, like stormtroopers. Yeah. Yeah, and they, and they, like, they, like, get in the way of Superman helping people, or sometimes even, uh, like, like, because they're scary looking, they'll, like, scare people. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and, and then that, that might, you know, they're liabilities, and that might mess up a situation. Um, because there's a place later on where, I forget where, but where one of them shows up and somebody almost falls off a building, because he's there, and the Superman's like, better catch this person. Um... How do you feel about the, about this issue on a whole with... with? I don't think his Lois is as likable as his Lana. No, she's not. And I think that's intentional. I think she's not Lois Lane yet. Okay. Like, I think, I think there is a Lois... And I'm reading too much into this when I say this, but he might have been thinking this. Remember at the beginning of this issue, uh, Lois has... And I love this. She has the BS thing before Superman. I think there was a Lois BS and a Lois a mm. AS. And I think, that, I think that's what it is. Um... The big thing that makes this not an article uh -huh. is her tirade about Prince Charming. Yeah. Um, you wouldn't put that in print. No. It sounds like a diary. Yeah. It sounds yeah. as much or more like a diary than what Lana's writing, except it sounds a little bit more journalistic-y just because that's who's writing it, you know? So, I mean, he has a good voice for her. Oh, yeah. I, I, I like... I, I. She's a little bit more distant and colder, which is I think she's supposed to be. I'm yeah. kind of okay with that. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, and again, I think he brings out the humanity in her. I think what ends up happening is she gets closer to Lana Lang as... And, and Lana even has that thing in the last issue about... Uh, the, the, I think it's it, I think it's Lana who says uh, if you really want to know Superman, you just have to get to know Clark Kent, mm -hmm. and I think that's probably what happens. Um, but with your thing at the end, Lois at this point, why is he not with Lana? Yeah, exactly. Um, maybe she will become the Lois Lane everyone knows, or or she'll she'll you know warm up a little bit. But this woman is not as right for Superman. As Lana Lang is. And the question we never seem to really address, at least in the two of these we've looked at so far, and I don't know how many of these origins we're going to look at or even going to deal with Smallville. We might read one that just doesn't really do much with that, bypasses it. So far we're looking at a lot of Smallville-centric stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but not really addressing why Superman uh, can't live in Smallville and be Superman. That's true. You know, there's not an, enough of a reason for in, that. Uh, in Man of Steel, he's just kind of like traveling the globe and decides to make Metropolis his headquarters because, I assume because, like New York City, it's kind of the central hub of everything in the country. Yeah. Um, and, and it probably gets news on And, of course, even country. though you can move really fast, you'd still want to be in the city. Like, yeah, like, and there's more know, people there those, if you're going to save people. Those few seconds count. Yeah. So there's that. But, I mean, he can still commute every day and stuff. You know, when he's finished, when he's decided I'm not saving lives today anymore, he could, you know, he could fly to Smallville. Superman never has that thought. No, no, I'm sure. No, I know, I know he does. Um, but... More to, more to that point, I guess we're talking about that last issue a lot, but more to that, but, but the bigger issue is, uh, what really is keeping Lana in Smallville? Well, she, nothing. She leaves. She goes and travels the world. She yeah, gets... And then she comes back and she stays. Yeah, I don't know about that. And that's that. the point I'm making. What is keeping her there, I'm besides not sure. that Superman isn't really into her and, and, you know, that Clark Kent doesn't really want to... We can talk about that when we get to the last issue. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but that's, that's the bigger issue, really. But so 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 this episode's really setting up the the Lex Superman thing, um, mm -hmm. even as we're uh, doing this through the eyes of Lois Lane. Um, she's not super important to this book. No, um, which I think partly maybe why I missed some of that you know narration stuff. Um, which is which is weird because if you tell me that you're doing a book about Superman from different characters' perspectives, the one who looks like the odd man out is the Lana Lang. Uh, Narrated issue. Yeah. Um, but Lois Lois is kind of the one that... Uh, she's she's really just there kind of for the story of that issue. Um, and like I said, these are kind of... It's in, it's kind of hard to talk about this book because it's it's really light on plot. Um, well, I do really... Let me say this. I do really enjoy that we get one that's narrated by Lax and that there is not one narrated by Superman. Yeah, yeah. I don't think this book works if it's if one if, if an issue is narrated by Superman. No, Maybe if the last issue was. I don't mean I don't mean the issue that we got. I mean uh, structurally, maybe if the last yeah. issue is narrated by. Yeah, if you were. And you're getting his thoughts on the people that have given their thoughts about him. Maybe. Um, but uh, you're right. Lois ultimately ends up being the, the odd man out because she's not that important. She's not that integral to the story yet. Um, so, right. I mean, it's a Superman story, yeah. I, I like all the spec. I, I like the speculation you can do. I like that this is all you get. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, the lowest issue is the first one where you really get to see a bunch of Superman. Uh, so I want to talk about the art for a minute. Yeah. Because um, we haven't done nearly enough of that. Yeah. Uh, well, well, first of all, I've never seen Sale colored like this, and it's gorgeous. Anytime I, I see him, because when you look at the color books, they're colored the same way as Long Halloween. Mm -hmm. um, and that's fine. I love Sale. It, his, his artwork is great. This is colored differently than those books. Mm -hmm. um, it's a much softer color. I was going to ask you how you, how you would describe it. Um, yeah, I, 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 it's more, it's softer, it's more pastel -y. Yeah, it's a little sketchier. Um, I, in a vacuum, just it's looking It's not overly at, inked either. No, no. Yeah, and we're not doing as much, obviously, than we do with Batman. Uh, we're not doing shadows. Yeah. Uh, this it's, is it's a Superman book. Yeah, I mean, rarely do you do shadows. Um, I but it's still a muted color palette. Sales almost always muted. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's a brighter muted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess you mean that like it's not it, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be more of like a of of like a uh, robin's egg blue before mm -hmm. it's 
you know, sky blue. Yeah. Um, I th I, th I think it looks I think it looks great in Metropolis. I think it sings in Smallville. I think the coloring in the Smallville stuff is mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Um, and and it's drab. Mm -hmm. Like it's intentionally drab. You know, it, it it makes it makes Smallville feel kind of gray and again old fashioned. But it also makes in in the first issue when you have that you have that scene with the sunset. Yeah. Um, it makes those things feel more uh, more powerful. Um. Yeah, you're right. Like it's not all it's not all entirely sad either. No, but it no. Feels, but, but, but this is can, not the beginning of Voyage of Oz. Well, and I was gonna say that there are places where it almost feels like that. Mm -hmm. But um, but I think but I think the idea is that you're supposed to understand what Clark appreciates about his home while simultaneously understand why he would want to leave it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh no, absolutely. Um, so. In a vacuum, I don't like Tim Sale Superman. Mm -hmm. If you just look at a picture of it, I don't like it. He doesn't. He has no his eyes enough. I don't like that. He's he's got balloon muscles. Um, <laughs> that being said, I think I think his Clark is great. Um, and I because the whole first issue is just Clark really. By the time we get to Superman, while reading it, I don't notice it. Because I'm used to how Clark looks, and, and it fits with Clark um, as the farm boy. Same here. In the context, I think it looks... It, yeah. It, it works just fine. Yeah. And this can't be the reason, and this is going to sound really silly, but there's a part of me that's like, maybe people would be less likely to recognize you if you didn't, if you if you had glasses, and then didn't have glasses, and also squinted all the time. <laughs> Uh, but the the idea I think is, but it, it's got to be there to really differentiate the Clark from the Superman, and because that is really throwback to Fleischer. Oh, is, is Fleischer is Fleischer Superman squinty? A little bit. See, I I I the reason I don't like the the reason I really don't like it on Superman is I associate that with Captain Marvel, the Shazam Captain Marvel. That's a good point. Um, I associate him with squinty. Um, Does so Lope have have a history of that character? Captain Marvel? Mm -hmm. Not as far as I'm aware. Okay. Um, you just made me kind of wonder about that. I think he shows up in that first... I, I know I know he shows up in the first arc of Superman Batman. Um, okay. Because he's one of Lex's people. But he plays with a lot of characters. Oh, yeah. That's all, that, again, that's that's not one of his things where like, he just he shoves characters in, and they're not. that's not what this book is. This is really... Uh, like, this feels like it's either before everything else he's done... Or he learned his lesson and and like drew back, uh -huh. but I know that's not what happened because he immediately follows this with with Superman, Batman, and the Superman, which run. is completely like like I'm mean, polar opposite from this. This feels like a like a like an alternate universe. Jeff Loeb showed up and wrote a script, um, because and I like some of Jeff Loeb's work. I, I think I, the, yeah, I mean I think the best way to put it is like rare form, you know. Like, well, I love Long Halloween. The Long too. Halloween is shoved full of characters. Mm -hmm. This is cleaner and simpler than I've ever seen Loeb. And is part of it just because he's writing four issues instead of 12? I mean, is it that simple? Is it, okay, we're going to do a whole year, it's going to be the four seasons, that's our, that's our framework, that's the structure, but we, we wanted, he wants to tell this personal Superman story so he wouldn't have the room to do all of that. Mm -hmm. um, but like, so he's not using this as an excuse to do that, it just, it, it, it just feels like he had a vision for it. Like... Yeah, yeah, but anytime he gets on any other book, he still does that same thing. Like, when he gets on Hulk, yeah. he's still... Uh, but that's a run, you know? And Long Halloween is 12 issues. That's true. Uh, but, um... Because he doesn't, he doesn't shove... If memory serves it, it's been a long time. He doesn't shove everything under the sun into Daredevil Yellow, either. Like I've never read not, Daredevil Yellow. It's not like I, he does I know Hulk Gray has Iron Man in it, and... Uh, I want to say there's another villain in there. But you're right, I guess, I guess that one's not super shoved full of... Uh, like, it's so weird to see this from Loeb, but it seems like he's trying to make the point I've always made with Superman, which is, if you think that Superman is too powerful and it's easy to solve every problem, you don't understand the point of Superman. Mm -hmm. And a lot of writers don't understand the point of Superman, which is, it's the internal conflict mm -hmm. that's that that, uh, that, that you, you can't solve with your superpowers. It's that mm. you can't save everyone. It's not just about whether or not you can die. It's whether or not you can prevent bad things from happening to everyone. It's about when everybody starts to look at you as, as a god, you feel like you have to do godlike things. Mm. And we've got we've got a couple of great moments where someone will say uh, 
you, you know, you can you can do everything, and he's like, no, I can't. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's kind of the big lesson he has to learn is that he can't do everything. Well, and and that that goes back to the conversation with the preacher, where he says, "What if one man could could stop all of this?" And he, and the preacher says, "But no one man can." And he goes, "What if they could?" And he can't. Yeah, he and can't stop everything. And he doesn't realize it, but the preacher is actually giving him the best advice he can give him, mm -hmm. which is do your best. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so so the third issue, and the preacher even says, "Now I'm thinking about it, in that scene." Everyone does their share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Um, so the third issue yeah. is is entirely narrated by Lex. Rob, maybe my favorite issue. I'm not sure. I see. I think it's the weakest issue of the four. Oh, do you really? Um, I, I just I just like how he writes Lex. I don't know. I love how he writes Lex. Yeah. I love the Lex narration. Um, no, the best. I don't know. It's hard. To, it's hard to say best issue because I love a lot of stuff about the about the. I last need you issue. to explain this to me because I don't get it. What about it? In in this panel, she says, like, "What does it look just like?" Um, is it a bird? I is it a plane? Is it Superman? Yeah, I wondered that myself. Okay. Um, yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't explain it to you either. But again, I, we're skipping at the line. Sheet. I was looking at it, and I was, and I was thinking, okay, is it supposed? To, is it because angel wings can be kind of like a cape, but then no, it looks like an angel. It looks like what a snowy yeah. angel is supposed to look like. Except, okay, again, we're, we've, we've skipped ahead to the fourth issue. We'll go back in a second. It looks just like a Lextrum. Why what, didn't he move his legs? He didn't move his up uh, because because so that she could say it looks just like because because Superman doesn't spread his legs out when he's flying. He's like, is that what it's supposed to? I guess I can I can kind of see that's what it's supposed to be. But I I I'm really staring at that panel. And I was like, what is the it problem? Look like? Is if a character says looks just like, it and you're like just like, nah, -uh, but then. <laughs> What kind of dumb things would you have to do with your arms to make it look like a Superman cape and not intentionally try to make it look like a Superman cape? It's true. Where she's like, it looks just, oh, really? I hadn't thought of that before. Well, you, you had your legs straight, and then you were doing this at the bottom, and I don't, and you had to have intentionally been making a Superman cape. Anyway, so the Lex issue. Okay. So, what, so what's, your, what's your deal with Lex? Uh, it's, it's not with Lex. I love Lex. I think Lex is great. Um, although his plan is rather grandiose, and yeah. I don't understand how there are no repercussions. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so, once again, we're, we're riffing on Burn, but not doing Burn, because this opens with Lex Luthor's first, uh, going to jail, just like we did in Burn. Yes. But it does not seem to be the same situation, and when he gets out... I don't really know what the situation is. Like, is it Superman that... Takes him to jail. I, don't, I I think Superman takes him to jail. I mean, that's probably what it's gonna be, but we're not. We don't really know what the circumstances are. I don't know if it's the first time he's been to jail. I like. I'm not really sure what the circumstances. Um, are. And and when when he gets out of jail in Man of Steel, he walks out and only Superman is there, and he has his his threats to Superman. You know, yeah. I'll get and you. He says, one never more. again. Yeah. Here he comes out. and It's a whole press conference. Once again, it's it's which is what would happen, right? No, it is. But once again, remember like, the man makes uh, one point five million dollars per second. You remember yeah. that? I like that line that he wouldn't bother to pick up a hundred dollar bill on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. um, I did the math on that um, to see how much he made in a year. Uh, my calculator ended up with an E on it. Yeah, it's. it's I was like, I don't even. I didn't even know you could get an E. Just multiply. That, that was unbelievable. Um, um, but, and, and and hilarious. And also, I didn't buy the whole. We're skipping around again, but I. But 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 speaking of Lex Luthor and and how rich he is. Okay, he, so there's a press conference as soon as he walks out of the prison. Mm -hmm. So, Lana Lang must just not own a TV, right? Because yeah. she has a line in the first issue where she says, do you think Lex Luthor really exists, or was he just created... Oh, yeah. Is he just is he just an idea that Metropolis created? Well, well, they say that in the, uh, the first issue, right. before Clark goes there. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so you're telling me he wasn't this powerful yet? Th th this, this gives you the sense that Metropolis maybe wasn't even a big city before Lex Luthor came along. Um, and I don't know how exact, how much he's exaggerating, but I, and I like this idea. He says Metropolis was just a town. He calls it a town. And then he says he turned it into what it is, and, and just like in Burn, you know, he owns it. Um, uh, well, and with that line, so I'm already noticing him cribbing stuff. Uh... But this is not a big one, okay. so maybe it's not because he only steals from the best where you would notice. 
<laughs> but in the shadow, uh -huh. there's a scene where the they talk about the you shadow. Live action film. Yeah. Okay. They they talk about the shadow in the radio, and uh, do, you, do you remember? Do you remember the? I do. The the the, the Asian guy that he saves at the beginning. Yes. Um, his wife says, "I think they just made up the shadow to get more to get more ratings for the radio." Yeah. Um, that doesn't sound like exactly the same thing to me. No, but because I was already thinking he's cribbing things, I was like, I don't know. And that would be more of a cool homage. And I sort of like the idea... I think that's a stretch. I, like, sure. Like, like, I, I I'm like not saying idea. he definitely stole this. Well, and here's the, here's the thing. When she said that, I was like, oh, that's fascinating, right? Like, Lex Luthor as a man in his ivory castle that, like, never comes down, nobody ever sees, he's Willy Wonka in the chocolate I, I, I don't think it's that. Um, that's not what I think it is. No. Ultimately, it cannot be. But when she said that, and we hadn't seen Lex yet, I thought that's where it was going. I think what the idea is is, is that she lives under a rock and doesn't have a TV, and is no, not no, actually no, seen no, him no, give a press no. conference. We are contrasting uh, small world and big world. Well, yeah. I think the I think the idea is she can't comprehend of someone being that rich and powerful. Well, maybe so. That, that must be a fictitious character that they've made up. Um, and she's like conspiracy theory, which maybe has something to do with her like traveling the world. Well, she hasn't done that yet. No, oh, but, but you're but saying why maybe she goes that's why she does. Yeah, yeah. Because, she wants to see what the world's really like. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so my issue with the Lex issue. Okay, and then I want to go back to the small town thing. Okay, because there's I got to remember to mention this because there's there's a cool thing that I don't know if he did on purpose or not. But anyway, okay. My my issue with the Lex issue is Toxin. Okay, one. We set up that she's obsessed with Superman, never plays out. Yeah. It never comes to anything. And Superman doesn't know. Like, you would think, given the ending, Superman would... It, it would be even more effective if he knew that this woman was obsessed with him. Yeah, that's a good point. And it doesn't, it doesn't come to anything. Um, so basically... Well, and, and also, she is... Uh, She's like programmed by Lex. It's really creepy. He, he does this thing where like he forces her eyes open. It's the it's again it's scribbling for the best. It's Clockwork Orange. He Clockwork Oranges her eyes open. Um, but it's like but but it's like a reprogramming thing. And, and ultimately, I wasn't really sure that he needed to do that. Well, he. What's weird is what he reprograms her with, which is all footage of Superman. Right. Which seems to be height. What you would think would be heightening her love of Superman. He's he's making her even more believe in Superman. This is what he does instead of the Bizarro clone, right? Yeah. That's what it is. I just I just put that together. Okay. So like, is he trying to make it like more realistic where Superman is the only like really uh supernatural or or uh, you know futuristic type that not futuristic, but you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like 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 Superman is the only pure natural thing. Exactly. And then and then everything else is by and large something that you could really do besides, you know. So 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 we have this scene. Does she have a rocket launcher or something? No, she doesn't. No, no, she just has the She's just chemical gun. She just has the chemical gun, right? Okay. So we have that scene where he pries her eyes open and makes her watch Superman. Now that can only be one of two things. One is that we're actually doing the clockwork orange thing where we are Torturing her and making her associate these images and, and 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 words and sounds with pain, and she's not she she will turn against Superman. Yeah, which is not which what is not what happens. Or he's heightening her love of Superman so that when she dies, it's all the more tragic. But we never tell Superman. Superman doesn't know that. Like, what does that do for the story? What does that do for her character? You can take that scene out, and she's exactly the same. We already know she has a mural to Superman. What are you, what are you saying? She he doesn't know. Superman doesn't know that she that she's obsessed with him. Superman doesn't know yeah. that that she like she says like I have I have a name like I, I have a cool name just like you just like, right and but something it's not else enough. he I don't think Superman I I don't get that Superman gets that she is. She wants to be Superman. I don't think it matters either because ultimately. The but then why do it? I, I don't know. No, I'm with you. I don't get that. Um, ultimately, and like I'm, I'm having a hard time remembering exactly what happens with that because it didn't. It didn't stick with me. Mm -hmm. Like, um, it because it, it ultimately just played as uh, kind of a device for Lex to manipulate Superman to leave. 
and that worked okay. We're, we're, we're like, because because he's talking about you know he, he says uh, he says they say you can change the course of mighty rivers, but you like you can't fix everything, and that plays into this idea that Superman's um, self conscious about not being able to solve every problem, and so um, he's blaming himself for not being able to. Yeah, you, know, you know, it's the same thing as the. I mean, like her heart stops. That's how she dies, and so it uh, they play it the same way as you know Pa Kent dying in the movie. I can do all these things, but. I can't. Okay, well, hold know, on. Stop someone's Because I have more issues with this. Yeah, sure. Um, but you said you said change the course of the mighty river. Yeah. Which uh, I want to sidetrack for just a second. Um, so he says that in the beginning. He says something. I think it might even be on the first page. He goes through the fast and speeding bullet, leap, tall building, single bound, can change the course of a mighty river. Mm-hmm. Is that a part of the Superman phrase that we've just forgotten the time? Like, is that in the Fletcher stuff? I don't is think that... it is. Okay, because he used it there. I can't remember. He used it there, and then when he's got when Lex has her eyes pried it's open, too. it shows up. Maybe that is in there, and I and I forgot. And, I and it then at time. the end, um, uh, when when everything's flooding, uh, Lana says, "I thought you could change the course of a mighty river." Okay, so um, I don't have I don't have anything on me to look this up. It's I been a long. Either. It's a bit. It's been a long time since I've since I've looked into this. Um, I did a lot of research years ago on Fleischer. If memory serves, I I honestly may be totally wrong about this. I think it might be that there's a piece of it that is missing from most of the cartoons, where like where like, or from some of them, where like there's a longer version of it, and then sometimes it's condensed. And I think that might be the deal. Because or it might be radio show and not in the, in the because cartoons. reading it, it felt maybe that's what it is. It felt like a thing that he always felt should be there and wasn't there. Like he keeps using it, or a thing that um he's ex- that he keeps using because he expects people to be familiar with it. Yeah, it could be either of those. Yeah, either um, of those. It might be. Yeah. I wasn't correcting you. I was. I was. I was agreeing. It might. It might. You know. Either you, you say. You, you know. You you say either, and I say Eric. Um, it it you um, know, it might be in the radio show, and like you know, and, and I'm forgetting yeah. it because that might be. I that assumed, might be one thing that that was longer. I can't remember. I assume that it, it, it was it was from a an older piece of Superman that we just don't we don't use that line anymore, and it's all over this book. Um. I don't think he invents it. Like that has to be a pull from something. Um, yeah, yeah. Lex calls her a true hero, and I don't know. I, I would I would have to live with this for longer to really okay. decide if I buy what he's doing with this. So so more Sorry. so more of my issue with Toxin. I don't, I don't have a good read on this yet. Is 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 that we. Okay, so Lex pollutes the entire city and sends everyone into, like, a coma or something? They all fall over. Yeah. Um, no one bangs their head and dies immediately. <laughs> Thank God. Um, Zero casualties. <laughs> uh, but he, he, he poisons everyone, and, and, and they all get infected with, with, with his virus. He is safe within his tower because it is a... Um, what do you call that? Um... Like like a clean room in a hospital, like 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 it's uh, it's cut off. It, yeah. it, it it's completely self contained. Um, mm-hmm. He has this scientist who's the one that, that he he gets before, who ha- who I believe creates this virus and the antidote, and he has the antidote, um, and Superman has to take her up into the clouds because it's in the clouds. Yeah. To to disperse this. All right. So there's two things with this. The first one is. Why does he have to take her? They he, Lex says, you have to know like how to administer it. She's just up there going like this. She's just like... <laughs> Superman could have done that. And a it's a point where I feel like... It's something Superman should bring up, where he's like, you lied to me. I could have done that. Um, yeah. And she has this gas mask. Didn't the gas mask save her? That's a good point. Why? Why does it... I don't understand. It would make more sense if she didn't have a gas mask because not, or if there was a line about how gas masks don't stop it or something. I don't understand why she dies. That's a good point. Yep, her heart just stops. Um, I was clearly ri- so. This is not my favorite issue <laughs> because clearly I was completely riveted and totally. I do not understand what's going on in this issue. <laughs> And then I don't understand why this makes Superman I was just leave. So into the human stuff that I wasn't. Yeah. Oh, and the Lex narration is yeah. great. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, all the stuff about like what his dad did to him. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, 
me just read this and we'll dissect it a little bit, okay. yeah? Okay. Uh, okay, so, poor thing overexposure to the very virus she caused. She had a gas mask. And why doesn't Superman say, I could have gotten up there and go, she I could have done that. She missed a true hero. They say you can change the course of mighty rivers, but you have so little understanding of how fragile a human condition is, how easily a life, all life, can be lost. Being the most powerful man in the world, th these statements don't seem to follow. Being the most powerful man in the world means nothing if you are all alone. No one knows that better than I. Go back to wherever you come from before you fail us all. Why does that make him leave? And he, he already understands the frailty of human beings, right? And he already knows, or is pretty sure, at the very least, maybe I mean, he can't he prove it. Save people in Smallville with the tornado. Well, and he already knows that he that Lex did this. He ha he has. To. At the very least, he's not just going to leave Metropolis to Lex. Yeah, yeah, because wait, he suspected him from the very very beginning. Not yeah. necessarily. I mean, I mean, I'm not talking about about this. I mean, just like he never trusted him, so he would he would he would have to be suspicious, even if he didn't know for sure. In a that parallel, that's what it was. okay. So again, yeah. Um, all right. So, so I wasn't joking when I said that I thought the okay, fourth issue. So never mind about what I said earlier about him being better at minute. I just like. I guess I just liked the idea. I got caught up. I got caught in this trap. I guess I just like the idea that he's able to manipulate Superman into leaving for the very reason that he should be there. I mean, I, I like that idea. I like the idea, and Le and Lex in narration. Yeah. seems much deeper and more and more clever. Then when he's speaking. And that's probably why it duped me, yeah. Because um, ultimately, I do this sometimes. I get so much more caught up in characterization and the ideas of a thing that sometimes you'll ask me, what happens in the plot? And I couldn't tell Well, you. and again, this book is light on plot. Yeah. This is the only time that there's really a plot to speak of. Yeah, and so that's not where my head's at. Yeah, um, and it's not it's not the other three issues either. The other three issues aren't really plot-driven. Yeah. Uh, they're character-driven. Um, now, I said before that I thought the fourth issue might be narrated by, by Batman. Um, and I wasn't joking. I really did think the fourth issue might be narrated by Batman. One, because he's in Man of Steel, and two... Probably not as you got into it. Probably as well, you got into it, you knew it wasn't Immediately Batman. when I started the issue, yes, I realized, this yes. is a great, this is a great, uh, that's great. Yeah. Um, although, although, his Lex is, is, in this issue, his Lex is, like, more bald. Oh, yeah, that's true. It's it's like four how months. Much, how much time has passed? Well, that could it happen. Co it covers a year. That could happen, although he looks he looks older. So, I mean, like, he started balding really fast in, in a, you know, you know in, a, in an older age. I mean, but I guess that could happen, certainly. Um, anyways, uh, so, uh, who better to go to about failure than Batman? I thought well, Superman really was going to go to Batman uh, and be like, what do you do when your villains are able to get away with something, or when you can't save someone? Because he's human, and he and he's still trying to do the same kinds of things as Superman is. That's where I thought it was going. It's not going there, and I like the last issue, but yeah, it has to book in with Smallville. Yeah, I mean, I guess it wouldn't have to, but I mean, it seems like that. It makes sense that it does. That's the story we're telling. Um, okay, before we get to that, uh, I gotta I gotta mention something that. Um, and, 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 I, and I don't know if I'm right about this, but it's close enough I have to bring it up. Mm -hmm. Especially because Lex makes that, uh, makes that comment about how uh, it was a town mm -hmm. before it became a city. Mm -hmm. um, he, is, he has made a Welcome to Metropolis sign that is suspiciously similar to the actual Metropolis, Illinois sign. Mm -hmm. uh, like, home of Superman. He is he is taken without Superman actually flying on it. He replaces it with the S, but he has taken the real life Metropolis Illinois sign and basically put it in this book. Is it possible it's the other way? Uh, How long have they had that exact sign? I don't know. That's a good question. They they might have changed it. I don't know. But if they didn't, and he did that on purpose, that's really interesting. No, yeah, that's really cool. But I but I don't know. I just I it's sim it's kind of similar. Uh, the other thing the other thing I wanted to mention um of, of just just kind of a cool little especially note. in ninety eight because ninety eight. We are not just going to Google, typing in Google Images. Yeah, that's something he would have had to have been to and seen. Yeah, and I could I could see him going there. Oh, um, absolutely. Oh, I guarantee you, Jeff Loeb's been to been to Metropolis. Uh, so yeah, I just want to throw that out there. Uh, but but you're right. It could it could be the other way. Um, but also, uh, this, this isn't related to that. But just just another uh, little cool tidbit to throw out. Um, the Kent's dog in this is named Shelby. Okay. And this is the first place we have that. That's the name of Crypto in Smallville. 
Okay. They name it, he tries to call it Crypto, and then by the end of the episode, they rename it to Shelby, and um, I looked this up, that's apparently, that apparently was one of the names of, it was the name of one of uh, Tim Sale's dogs. So he has a dog named Shelby, oh, he put cool. that in here, and then that made it into, in, into Smallville, because Jeff Loeb is working on Smallville, I would imagine. I wonder if Jeff Loeb wrote that well, episode. Well, I don't think he's still writing, I don't think he's still involved in it by then, though, and that's like season five or six. I don't think he's still on it at that point. I think five might be when he leaves. I'm not Maybe sure. Maybe I'm wrong. I'd have to look at the production history. Because he doesn't. Know. He also, I don't believe, starts on Smallville either. No, Smallville he's there. Starts no, he's, there he's there in the first season. Oh, he's there in the first season. Yeah. Oh. That's why that I don't really doesn't make this. sense. Yeah. Almost positive he's there in first. I, I'm pretty sure he's got a credit in the pilot. You might be right. I can't. I, I don't. I don't know for sure though. Um, you know. I don't get in trouble. I don't remember. You're a trash um, spurt. It's not a small spurt. That, that's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, so now we get into winter. Yeah, the final issue that we've already sad, discussed. Of course, the sad, tragic thing has to happen in winter. Yeah. Um, uh, so Clark <laughs> goes back home, and he's... There's there's your... <laughs> there's my favorite page. Yeah. There's my favorite panel. The big two-page spread with the Lex... Uh, uh, I almost said Lex bot, but with, yeah. the, with the Lex drone guy going, Citizen, stay inside! <laughs> Lex Corp is concerned for your safety. <laughs> it's pretty great. Um, so Clark goes back to uh, this page is fun. Yeah. Uh, her her thinking if Clark and Superman because Clark leaves and Superman's also not there. She's, she's putting pieces together, but it's like that ah, doesn't. No. I like that, and I think he's I think he's borrowing that from earlier material, and I'm not sure, sure, I'm sure. what, but um, but I th but I think I think she does that in other places too. I. She does in Superman 2? No, I guess she just fully figures it out. She, yeah, yeah, she's working toward it. Yeah. Um, and I think they kind of do that moment where she's like, that's dumb, and then she decides that it must be true. Mm -hmm. um, I like it better in the Donner cut where she actually draws glasses on his, on, mm -hmm. on his face on a picture and stuff. Um, the problem with going back to a thing like this is that I've consumed enough Superman stuff over my life that remembering what I, I looked at after this and before can be kind of difficult. So, mm. or, or what exactly I'm thinking about. So I feel like I maybe have seen this dramatized in... Well, Terry Hatcher has to do this. I think she does, and maybe it's in one of the uh, Superman animated movies or something. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, but I feel like that's a scene I've seen before. So Clark goes back to Smallville because he's sad. Um, and he feels like he's not, he's not good enough. He's not worthy. Uh, and Lana has also returned to Smallville at this point. Um, and then there's a big... How much time passes between the last story and this story? Because... A, a month? Okay. I, I don't know. It's four seasons, I well, assume. The, but the reason I'm saying that is, what has he been doing all this time when... Because, because you know, Lex is like, you should leave, and he's okay, and he leaves. Well, he leaves at the end of the Lex issue, I believe. Right. I, I, I think he might have been in Smallville for a little bit of time. That's what I'm saying. So um, that's what I was trying to figure out, is if he's been here So for yeah, a he's while. been there a little bit. Lana comes back, um... And then there's a big flood, which, I'm not from Kansas, floods common in the winter? Not really, it'd be more of an ice storm. you think you'd get one of those. But it's better than, hey, a tornado, let's all hide in an overpass! Um, that felt really weird to me that there's a flood in winter. It's a good point, um, if it's... The way it's drawn is weird because there's snow on the ground and it looks like snow flurries and stuff in the sky. You could have a flood in the winter, possibly. I mean, like, if, if temperatures were warm enough. And in Kansas, we get majorly fluctuating temperatures. So I suppose it's theoretically possible. Um, well, but, and, and I think they say that this is like the first time it's happened in like 30 years or something like that. Yeah, um, but it should be a huge blizzard before it's a... Before it's a flood, um, but I, I'm not saying it's not possible. Um, I mean, I do like uh, I do like just just the the atmosphere of it. You know, it's kind of cool uh, seeing the water mixed with the snow. It just feels like more of a summer thing. Um, um, yeah, I agree with you. But so, um, and the same situation could happen with a blizzard. It doesn't need to be a flood. Mm. It could just be a blizzard. Well, but but then you you don't you don't get the line about uh, turning my rivers. Um, oh yeah, you still could though. With a blizzard? Yeah, maybe It's not, not as literal. Maybe not. It's not as literal. Um, yeah. All right. Well, fair enough. So, Superman kind of goes and saves people from the flood, feels better about himself, goes back to to to, to Metropolis. Here's the thing. Yeah. I really like all the Lana stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy, is this an underwhelming conclusion to the story. Like, the, the arc of... Again, because I wasn't completely convinced that he should have been sent back to Smallville in the first place. 
What convinces him to go back also feels really flimsy and weak to me. That's fair. Um, again, that's not what the issue's about. It's about Lana, and that stuff's great. But the actual Superman arc of it, I don't love. I, I, I think it's kind of flimsy and weak. I mean, I guess it's just supposed to be... He re he learned he remembers how to save people. He he yeah, and you know he just remembers that he can't stop everything, but the things he can stop, you know, that's important. Um, but that should be the lesson of the book, and I don't feel like it is. I feel like he's just like I don't know. I can and save don't people. you feel like the 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 message the pad the, the preacher has at the end about the seasons is kind of tacked on and not really what we've been looking at? Like yeah. I, I I rattle my brain trying to trying to figure out whether or not I was missing something, and if that because the problem is. If it's if it's spoken like that and it was clear, that's like like that's one thing. But mm -hmm. if he has to come out and give us that, and we haven't really seen that through the way, and you could also say, you know, if you were if you were getting it through the book, you don't really need him to say that. But it feels kind of uh, it feels kind of heavy handed. Yeah, you know, we can be grateful for the seasons, no matter how cruel or harsh they may seem. For it is only through their pas passage that we can truly appreciate the future. I feel like you're just trying to justify the fact that you made it a seasonal thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so, so when I first read this, because I read it before you, I handed it to you, so what'd you think? And I said, I love the first half, uh, and I like the second half. Mm -hmm. This is why I like the second half. I think, I think the Lex narration stuff is great, I think the Lana narration stuff is great. Yeah. I don't think the story works in the second half. Um, just me personally. I, uh, and I, I know there were people in the comments that said that this is their favorite Superman origin. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's why I thought we definitely should do it, was because some people were saying it was their favorite. I don't... I really like it as as kind of as kind of a character study, although I think I'm more interested in Lana than I am Clark. Yeah, uh, and I think the reason that I didn't feel so overwhelmed by the end is that I was a lot more captivated by the small town stuff. And, and that's something you have more of a connection with than I do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and I hate to say that you know it's all it's all style and no substance because there is substance. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, you're right. It does actually have kind of some big problems. I mean, I think it does. Uh, I, I would love to see because once again, I don't get why he why why he doesn't want to stay with Lana. I would love to see some of the people that, why she wouldn't be his anchor. I, like she needs to be the reason, he goes, be the back reason he goes back somehow. Yeah. Really, really, what it should be if we're rewriting this book. Yeah, what it should be is that that should also be tied to why he's not with her. It should be that thing from Man of Steel where Superman's too big for one woman. Uh, he's too big for this town. Yeah, it's he really don't talk. He about can't that. stay stay here. Saving four people, he has to. He has to be in the in Metropolis where he can save everyone and see everyone and and all I that stuff. I hate to say that. I, I hate to say this, but um, without without just doing a whole other read of this right now, mm -hmm. um, it's hard. And you know, I'm not going to waste your time. Uh, it's hard not to. Th that'll be a, that'll be a Patreon video. <laughs> <laughs> and Captain and Logan now, reads. Captain Logan Red reads. Fall seasons. <laughs> Volume five, <laughs> but. It's a whole series we do on Patreon. It's called Captain Logan Reads. It's not real. Don't, don't. I mean, pay the Patreon, but not for that. That doesn't exist. <laughs> Join Patreon to watch me read. <laughs> I'm on cam all Captain Logan on camera. All we'll make it a live show. We'll make, we'll, we'll make, we'll make it a live I'll stream. Spawn you without the narration. Well, that's right. There's gonna be uh, no, because I'm not picking that up again. Uh, no, no. I mean, just you just reacting reading. and flipping. Yeah. It's gonna be yeah, yeah, and and just very, very rarely will you see me do anything interesting. You know, and then at the end really... of the book, you're just like, hmm. And then, <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm not gonna review this here. I promise I won't do that on Patreon. <laughs> anyway, um, it's hard not to think after the conversation we're having mm -hmm. that maybe. It would have been just as reasonable to see Clark stay in Smallville at the end. Yeah, it's like he saves all these people, and I mean, does it have something to do with the conversation he has with this his father? Could easy, this could easily be a I have a purpose here, um, and these people need me just as much as the people in the big city. Like you could get to that reasonable conclusion at the end of this story just as easily. Yeah, it's just. Some of it's a POV issue because th this this doesn't feel as as much like Clark discovering anything as it is Lana like maybe it should be narrated by Clark maybe maybe the last issue should be Superman so that we see his thought process and why he's able to yeah because because this sounds like she's come to kind of a revelation about the about the way she she looks at, at Superman and how she feels about him becoming Superman. I finally realized while I was away how special... Oh, I guess it's just while she's away, though. It's not really really this. Mm -hmm. um, 
because I understand that uh, man in the cape who could fly all 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 I needed to know was Clark. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't know what I don't know what he's getting out of this. He's just being Superman. Mm-hmm. And it's really weird that we we put that Lois going hmm thing. Maybe Clark and Superman is no. And then Superman shows up in Smallville. Yeah. Clark comes back with a story about Superman in and Smallville. She goes, How do you do that? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't like that. Um, that see what it should have been is that should have ended on her being like, uh, oh man, I think I know. Um, oh the. The Lex drone, I like this bit of continuity. He's got some nice, some nice little callbacks to continuity things, and that's also why I feel like this is more of a cohesive piece mm-hmm. than than uh, the Man of Steel is, which again is fair because that's setting up a whole run. And this is the they're, comic, they're, not the not the movie. They're different things. Boy, we just keep having that. Um, okay, so the drone, the kid that almost falls, it's the same one chasing the cat, and he's still mm-hmm. chasing oh, that yeah. cat. Yeah, because because he says, "I think I've seen you before." Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so. Is Trevor somebody? Trevor somebody does not exist. What are you talking about? Um. Well, well, they, they just they they make kind of a deal out of like him meeting this kid and saying his name, and I'm just wondering if that's like a character that I should know. Not as far as I know. Okay. Um. But maybe he grows up. Okay. And becomes I don't know if you again. noticed this. I was just wondering because this seems like the kind of thing you would lose your mind over. Okay. Did you notice that the LexCorp building is a giant L? Yeah, he did. It's great, right? What I like about it is that you can't tell unless you get an overhead view. You get the overhead, yeah. And you got to get real high up to get that. No, it's awesome. I've also seen it in other places. Oh, have you? Yeah. That's the first time I can think of it. I the first time like, I noticed it. Okay, I don't know if I've ever seen it exactly like the shape of it is an, is an L from overhead like that, mm-hmm. but isn't the one in Superman the Animated Series shaped kind of like an L? Doesn't it like go up and then come over? It's been a while since I watched. I that. forget. Maybe. I know I've seen that that building somewhere. I wasn't super surprised by it. I thought that. But was now really that you're cool. saying that, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and because there's L's all there's the L's on the on the on the suits, and there's the L's on the. I was like, oh, and this building is an L. Of course, it is. Um, I feel like as we're talking, I'm, I'm liking the the. I'm liking the internal conflict in the in the in the dilemma and the kind of coming of age aspect of it more than I'm liking the story itself, but I don't like this as a Superman story. I like this as a story about people reacting to Superman. Yeah. I don't think there should have been a three-narrative about Superman. I think this book should have just been four different people from Superman's life reflecting on him. Which is kind of what it is. But they try but they try to do this through narrative and I don't think the through right. narrative works. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And the big thing I wanted to praise it for was that it's it's four disparate stories that become a story and now I'm not totally sold on it. Just because like you said at the end, I don't know why he goes back to Metropolis. And I don't know why he and, and, and the thing I was hung up on, yeah, and like I was just chalking that up to, yeah, you know, plot stuff. And then now <laughs> I'm looking at it and oh okay. Um but like but like uh, I was hung up on why doesn't he stay with Lana and that's part of it. Right? It's like he has every reason to stay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he, it seems like he would have... you think he would have the same concerns that made him leave Metropolis, but then I'm not sure I'm buying that diatribe that Lex has that makes him leave, because some of those statements I'm, I'm not sure are really following. Yeah. Um, but there were there were definitely people in the comments from Asteel that were saying that this is their favorite. Yeah. I would love to hear those people explain to me why this is their favorite Superman origin. What is it? Maybe, maybe, maybe it's something that we're missing, or maybe it's something they're getting out of it. Uh, I'm hoping we're not. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm hoping we're missing um, something. But I would it. love to know what it is that makes this somebody's favorite Superman origin. He doesn't have the S on the back. That was no, good. he doesn't. Who does that? I, th- I think that I. I don't think he does in the uh, in Loeb's Run either. And you know what else? Speaking of the uh, no, this is not. This is not another problem with the book. No, it's no, another sure. problem with, with with Loeb after this book. Yeah, yeah. How does this guy write Public Enemies? You this got Lex you got is me. not that Lex. No, you got me. It's like he got all commercial about it. You know, it's 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 like it's like he's trying to make something that feels more like a sellable, like cartoon or something. It's like this book is him writing what he wants he to write, to do, like, and that book is him too. writing what he thinks people want. Or maybe there's like two sides to him, and he likes doing the over the top cartoony stuff also. Because sure, sure. Um. But I think you could blend them. Yeah, I I think that's what Halloween is blended. I mean, that's 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 
often the big praise for Morrison is that he blends the the, the, the kooky stuff with mm-hmm. you know you know real storytelling. Um, so I didn't love this book. Yeah, I'm gonna um, give it another once over now because you noticed a lot of stuff I wasn't thinking about. Okay, well, um, so I, I don't know if we're, if we're doing like origin rankings, but uh, of the two, <laughs> Man of Steel's t- the, the the comic book, not the film. Is uh, of the two, I think it's the better. Um, but I, I would recommend he, I reading this. Overall, it is too. But there are things that he builds on with, with, with to that that I like better. His, I mean, like like I like I like his Lana mm-hmm. so much. I still like his Lex better, even if I don't understand that speech, <laughs> um, or, or or how or how he can he can even begin to be sure that that's gonna you know make. Uh, or how start, you know putting Lana everyone in the city into a coma doesn't come back to bite him in any way. <laughs> Well, it's like the bad guy plot in the 2014 Ninja Turtles movie. It's like, no, people are going to figure out you did that. Well, and it's it's ins- like it's really weird because this is such a small, intimate book. Yeah. That is the biggest plan you could possibly do is everyone in the city is affected. Yeah, and I think I had... I, 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 th- I think I kind of adjusted my expectations to where I was like, this book isn't going to those places. And then it did, and I completely missed that it went there. It's, it's crazy. Um... Yeah, it's uh, but it's a thing that I understand why you would go back to and borrow things from. Oh, absolutely. And um, you is it's it's definitely the best representation of Smallville I've ever seen. Uh, especially the takes on the characters. Um, I could totally see uh this this Luther being an inspiration on somebody else's Luther. Um, and it makes you wish that Man of Steel was like a blend of these books. Yeah, you know. Yeah, um, especially with all the small little stuff in that. They should have drawn from that. I cannot. I cannot. Look at Superman saving his dad in a tornado. Man, steal the movie. Yeah, I can't do it. I can't. I can't look at Superman saving or Clark saving his dad from a tornado anymore. Yeah, without just cracking up and losing my mind. I can't do mm-hmm. it because it's so goofy and uh, like like it's just every time because I've seen it in a couple places now since I've watched that movie. And this literally has him saving his dad from a tornado. And and the other times I've seen it, it's that it's it's he saves it. Well. I can't remember. Didn't the serial do that? The serial that we watched wasn't there a tornado, a tornado, a tornado in that? And he it's saves him something like that. Yeah, and he saves yeah. him that too. Yeah. I forget, but like I can't see that scene. Yes, in there anything. was because we made we made a joke made about a joke like about Clark. No, not no, now. Don't see, someone can see. see me. Somebody might see. Yeah, and then he goes to the wizard, and then he goes to, to the land of Oz. <laughs> um, but like, but like, I, I uh, is that what happens? I really need to go back and rewatch that rewind of yours. Yeah, he, then, he, then he goes to Oz. Yeah, that's what happens if you go on an overpass when there's a tornado. Is the tornado comes close and then you, you, you go to Oz. The first thing I said to Cap when he came to get me, the very first thing I said to him was, "Cap, you're not in Kansas anymore." <laughs> that is that's because I am said. so original. I too crib from the best. Uh, Eric, what is the next one? Uh, the next one's Birthright. Birthright, which is the one that most people say is the biggest inspiration on Man of Steel, the film. Interesting. So that will be interesting. Does it have a lot of Krypton stuff? I've not read it, but I, I believe know it does. things about things. So. Um, uh, no, no, but I, I just I see people talk, and I think again in our comments for Man of Steel, I believe people were saying that Birthright is the big one that they pull from. I think somebody specifically says that they don't think Man of Steel is as pulled from this book as it is from Birthright. Um, and I know Birthright gives us the uh, the S as a symbol for hope. I at least know that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I figured that came from someplace. So, yeah. Uh, Birthright is our next one. Well, everybody, thanks a lot for watching. Sure appreciate it. Um, I, I feel like I need to go back and read this again, because I had a different experience with it than you. And, and I like, feel like most... And I feel like your, your experience was more authentic than mine, because I think I ended up just, like, focusing on... The right stuff and the wrong stuff. The good right? stuff. Because like, I, well, and what the what the point of the book was, mm-hmm. like, like what what he really wanted you to put. But then he puts in that big Lex Luthor plot, and my eyes glazed over, except for the narration, which is really good. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, well, and like most Jeff Loeb books, nicely, you can read this about five minutes. Yeah, it's quick. It's it's a real quick read. It's a quick read. For um, the, you know, a couple hundred pages. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Sure appreciate it. And we'll see you again soon for Birthright. I am Captain Logan. And I am Eric. <laughs> see you next time. <laughs>